Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews today. Uh, a couple of changes to the $1.29 diversity control, I'm afraid. We're putting three new parts on it. It's getting really complex. Two capacitors, one resistor. And I'll tell you why we use these. Uh, these the resistor produces something called hysteresis, which is a really big long word that just means it wants to be one way or the other. It's like a, a switch on your transmitter. You take a transmitter, you've got these little switches here. Two position switch. Now if you slowly move that switch, it gets to about halfway then bloop, flicks to the other way. If you try and move it back, it gets to halfway then oh, flicks over. So it never wants to stay in the middle. It wants to be one way or the other. And that's what hysteresis produces, effectively produces. It's a bit more complex than that, but hysteresis effectively tends to want to make the system stick with one receiver or the other receiver rather than farting around trying to flicker around in the middle like it did before. So hysteresis makes the switching from one receiver to the other much cleaner. I've also added a couple of capacitors and these are there to basically because the RSSI levels can go up and down really quickly and that can cause rapid switching, the little capacitors slow the rate of rise and fall. So what could just be a very momentary dropout in the signal which causes an imperceptible flicker on the screen doesn't trigger a change of receiver on this diversity switch so because that will produce a bigger flicker so it basically allows some minor flickering to occur from the signal without causing things to flip over the result is a reduced flicker overall so that's really good now um, the value of the components and where to put them you want a Somewhere between 820 kilo ohm or one mega ohm resistor will go between pin one and pin three of the LM324. So it's between one and three of the LM324. That's one mega ohm or 820 k ohms. That's the hysteresis. That just provides a bit of positive feedback to push it one way or the other as it changes. That's fairly simple. Two capacitors, 0.1 microfarad they are. 0.1, which is a 104, if it's got numbers on it, you see 104 written on it. And they, those capacitors go from pin two to ground and from pin three to ground. And that's what takes out the, the high, the rapid changes in signal. It, it basically slows down those changes so we're not gonna get the false triggering of the diversity switch. That's all it takes, that's all it is. So there you go. Now I'll show you, I've set it up in this video, you'll see that sometimes the LCD screen goes blank. Oh, what's going on? Well, it's one of those things that blacks out. You know, it hasn't got blue screens, but instead of bluing, it goes black. So that's what you get when you get a, a loss of signal, even for the smallest, smallest period of time. Remember, in this test, I'm using the video uh, uh, FPV backpack with the circularly polarized antenna, but on the receivers themselves, I'm just using, let me unplug one here so you can have a look at what I've got. So you can understand why we're getting that. Here's one, here's one I've set up earlier. All I've got is this little titty piece of wire here. You can probably hold it up so you can see it. It's a little titty piece of wire. That's all we've got for a receiver and it's laying on the bench. So we're not gonna get any sensible amount of range. And because it's not circularly polarized, we do get uh, multi-pathing and reflections, which means that even the signal that's getting the strong, or the receiver that's getting the strongest signal may get some flickering due to this multi-pathing. It's probably not gonna happen, almost certainly not gonna happen when we fit our receivers with the right aerials and we use it outdoors, which is why flight testing is gonna be important. But have a look at this video. You'll see, note particularly the trace on the oscilloscope, how instead of going like this, it's just going nice square switching now, much better than before. So here we go. Okay, so we're set up again with the modified diversity control. I've made a couple of changes here and I've got the oscilloscope over here. You notice this, it's the switching between the two different receivers using diversity. And you, you notice now that it's a much more clean switch. The, the, it doesn't have all that noise on it that we had before when it switches. If I move this around, see the switching there? That's because I've added hysteresis, which makes for a very, very sharp switch rather than a soft one. And I've also put a couple of capacitors on there just to reduce the amount of flickering that we might get. There's still a little bit of flickering going on here, but I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk and we'll just see how it compares to last time. I'll go for a bit of a tour around the old facility here. So hopefully the microphone will last. We're going back out to the messy area out the front. Barry's area, is his AXN, look at that, beautiful. And I might actually just take a bit of a wander outside. The wireless mic will probably, whoops, probably break up here, but this will give you an idea because we're outside the building now and we're probably going to be getting all sorts of static and the, the, the diversity controller is probably going to be going like crazy trying to keep up. So here's the old famous tower. Come back inside and uh, see if that's worked out all right. You never know. We go back through the door, close that, stop people coming in. And uh, lovely, look at all that. Let's just see how that worked out. Here's my studio again and back in see if we had a you can see the diversity's been switching like mad there hopefully it hasn't flickered too much we'll take a look 
Right, so the next step is I've got to throw um, an FPV plane in the air, fly it around, video the downlink through the diversity controller so you can see for yourself that it's working okay. And uh, I've got to see for myself as well. But as I say, we've really boosted the component count now. This is getting really complicated. It's got three extra components. Uh, but on, uh, honestly, the price of those capacitors should be like a 20 cents or something. The resistor, five cents. So we'd add 45 cents to the price. It's still under two bucks. So you can't grizzle too much. Anyway, make those mods if you think you need them. Try them out. Tell me how you get on with your dollar, under a dollar, under two dollar diversity controller. And if you've got any questions as usual, bung them on the bottom and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, it's time to get back to the bench.